All righty, guys, we're back for Big Butts, and this is a Murder Zach Harlov Manor Standard Brew, and I'm Red Cat. Let's briefly go over the deck, then hop right into some ranked butt. First things first, this was a suggestion over in the Discord, so thank you so much for the suggestion. It's gonna be a fun one. Playing a bunch of cool cards like Pride of Hall Clade. This is an 11 mana, 215 legendary creature. But it costs X less to cast, where X is the total toughness of creatures you control. So we could get this really cheap, really effectively in here, hopefully, right? <laughs> that does have Defender, unfortunately, but it also has this bottom ability for two and double blue. Until end of turn, target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, gains whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw cards equal to its toughness, okay, and can attack as though it didn't have Defender. Now, that's not the only way to get rid of Defender in here. We also have Walking Bulwark, which is a 1-mana 0-3 Defender. And for 2-mana, until end of turn, target creature with Defender gains haste, uh, can attack as though it didn't have Defender, and assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power, activate only as a sorcery. So if you activate this Bulwark on the Pride of Hall Clade, not only does it get haste, maybe you dropped this for super cheap, right? But it loses that defender, and now you're swinging in with a 15-15. Oh, buddy. It is worth noting that Bulwark only can target defending uh, creatures, which is going to be the pride in here. It's going to be the Bulwark itself, and also Concealing Curtains as well. So one mana 0-4 defender can eventually transform into Revealing Eye, which could come in handy as well. We do have a bunch of removal packed in that for some reason I feel like going over real quick. We have a couple go for the throats. So this could totally be your choice spot removal. We do have a little bit of utility with Tear Asunder and a small board wipe with Malicious Eclipse because Malicious Eclipse is just not going to hit anything in here except for Streetwise Negotiator, which is totally fine if Negotiator gets picked up with Malicious Eclipse because at that point, hopefully it's already done its job because it has backup one. You can always plug that onto another creature then it gets this bottom ability as well this creature assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power uh, which is kind of key for a deck like this right so we do have more of the those style abilities with like bedrock tortoise all four of them four mana zero six as long as it's your turn creatures you control have hex proof that's actually pretty decent and then each creature you control with toughness greater than its power assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power nice uh bedrock tortoise is kind of ridiculous dude as it's a four mana kind of sort of six six and then on your turn your creatures have hex proof like what on earth now we also have that uh, bottom ability on tortoise just stamped onto ancient lumber knot as well just to have like five of the same ability in the four drop spot although i do believe lumber knot to be much more janky than tortoise we do have other big booty creatures packed in like Akel Pakel, and we do have enough artifacts for this to be worthwhile, like Reality Chip is in here, and of course the Bulwark is an artifact, but we also have some artifact generators like Old Rutstein, uh, potentially giving us treasures or blood tokens as well. So Akel Pakel, when that artifact enters at the beginning of each player's end step, uh, you get to look at the top two cards of your library, then you put one of them into your hand and the other into your graveyard, so a great way to keep our hand nice and stocked up mana base that i thought about for a little bit check out these honorable mentions they're kind of important cogwork wrestler kind of sort of fits the big booty theme but not really it's a cool little tempo guy but also i like that it has flash so you could potentially use that akal pakal's ability on the opponent's turn that could be cool of course shieldred almost made the cut it's definitely something to consider and then for the mana base i thought about plaza of heroes because we do have quite a few legends packed in maybe as a one of could be cool Okay, guys, we're going to save the more in-depth discussion for the end of the video. Maybe make some changes before I go ahead and post it on Aether Hub as well. Either way, let's go ahead, take it into some ranked, and see how we do. Okay, we'll see if we can get right into that first game here. In the meantime, what am I expecting from the build? I mean, you could probably tell by looking at it, right? I'm expecting it to be super janky. I think we're going to have a lot of trouble against the current standard. But hey, man, it's going to do a cool thing here and there for sure. Other words, I wouldn't even wouldn't even consider it. Um, so no blue source. We're really just splashing blue in here anyways. This is totally fine. 24 total land. 
hopefully we don't need more than 24, or hopefully we don't need to consider more than 24. Um, we're going to try Bulwark first. Concealing Curtains is not, not a bad play, but... Oh, so you know what's interesting here? Oh, so the Negotiator doesn't have the Creatures Lose uh, Defender, unfortunately. So that's actually a little bit awkward. But there's a reason we don't have all four of them, and we only have the two packed in. Ooh, man off the top. That's something we wanted to see. It's probably attempting one of the old... Well, maybe we just, like, use the Bulwark's ability instead of running right into a counter spell. Hold off on the Negotiator for now. We play Curtains, see what happens. We do have two open to play around like a Make Disappear. Bulwark on Curtains. Gets Haste. Loses Defender. Swings for four. Let's do this. All right. We got the four through. <laughs> the haste is actually pretty silly, huh? Temporary lockdown. Number one. We do have Terra Sunder in here, so I'm actually... Like, it's only a one of, but still, I'm actually not too concerned there. Old Rutstein or Stein or something. A okay, Scrap Gorger. Actually, with how... Okay, okay. Okay, a bunch of creatures. That's good. So now's a good time to try to plug some extra damage in with the Negotiator hitting the old Rutstein. Bean. <laughs> Something. But with four open, we have to just anticipate Wandering Emperor. Which would definitely suck, but we still have Scrap Gorger too. So let's see if they go for the counter spell. This is actually pretty sketchy because we're we're going wide enough for them to just say, okay, I guess I'll drop Sunfall then. Eh, whatever. <laughs> Up against control, like we're overall, we're going relatively slow here. And I can only imagine Wandering Emperor. And then once the Wandering Emperor hits the old Rutstein, maybe they decide to save the Sunfall. Because at that point, we'll only have two creatures and a token, so. But we're going for it, dude. March. It's not a Wandering Emperor, and we actually get that one through. Very nice, guys. It is not a board wipe. It was a tap land. Okay. Well, a lot of our creatures are just kind of sitting there awkward, huh? But Restless Cottage is not a bad card to see here. Would have been better earlier, like turn two. And then an untapped source now, maybe power it up. But then walking into the Wandering Emperor that way would be really bad as well. Oh, that's right. Negotiator still has that ability, so it's actually... Still a relatively okay swing here. I'm wondering if we play the old Rutstein or if we play around the board wipe. And I think we play around the board wipe, unfortunately. And at the end of their turn, we'll make sure to tap the Scrap Gorger to start getting some counters on that. Memory Deluge. Okay. Yeah, so far, not too bad, huh? Restless Anchorage there. Temporary Lockdown number two. Okay. That means they have three open. I wonder if we can start swinging with this cottage then. Hmm. Cottage is another great way to get artifacts on the board that works well with that uh, Akal Pakal too. Um, it could be old, old Rutstein. Uh, the Temporary Lockdowns Particularly brutal, huh? Hitting five of our cards. We power up Restless Cottage and they just go spot removal. We're definitely crying about that. So I suppose it's just going to be old Rutstein. See if we could start generating some value with this. Maybe some blood tokens or something too. Ah, uh, there we go. There's a blood token. And we definitely didn't need that malicious eclipse. And blood tokens can help us filter some bad draws as well. We definitely need to go a little bit faster here. Field of Ruin. Did they just did they just play that? Or was I ignoring the fact that they had a Field of Ruin over there? Okay, we'll grab a forest. No worries there, right? Yeah, no worries. We have our blue source. We have our black sources here. Come on, old Rutstein. Pull us back. Oh, no. 
You milled the pride. And I'll go for the throw. Yeah. Okay, we'll actually ditch that. And I'll do this like before combat and everything because there's a lot in here that could affect this combat. Okay, actually I'll keep that to get rid of if we see another blood token. And this isn't worth the swing, is it? As we're trying to generate value, I don't want to swing and then they just immediately drop the Wandering Emperor or something. Playing around a ghost, but you never know. Could be other stuff that cares about swinging. Come on, blood token. I'm looking to filter. Okay. <gasps> Tear asunder. Okay. Nice, nice. That's what that's one of the things we were looking for. So this has that um ETB with the backup. But like and bulwark only affects defenders, but we could do that for one of the revealing eyes. Just like I think the more value, the better, right? So we go tear us under. See if it, I mean, it might get countered too. Actually, just in case it's like a syncopate style effect, I will play the land as well. Temporary lockdown, get three of our one drops back and then we're gonna try to get as much value as possible here. It is gonna be a no more lies. Luckily we have the three. Do they have something else then? No more lies. Oh, no. We do have a swing now, though. They only have one remaining, so we're still kind of getting through here, but that was our only... That was our only Terrace Under. Oh, no. Sunfall. And our land is gone, too, so I think that's that. And if they're going for the mill... Bulwark. Dude, not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. It really isn't. Look at this. Getting them down to five. Yeah. But I'm assuming we're controlled now, right? Like, we milled two of our prides. Like, that could have been pretty good off the top when we had more creatures on the board, though, because now it's going to be too expensive. Two of the prides are gone. Two of the tortoises are gone. No, three tortoises are gone. <gasps> Another bulwark. Wow. Oh, they took our uh, restless cottage, by the way. Hmm. They can power up Restless Anchorage quite effectively here. They can't power up the Cottage effectively. They do have Incubator to power up too. Dude, Bulwark's like a really solid draw two turns in a row. It really is. Like, for real. It's totally fine to swing into this, guys. Like, um, if we're on the run anyways, we might as well continuously attempt the pressure regardless of the blocks that they have. Because the second we hold back is the second they grab whatever they need. Like, they they have a full-powered memory deluge at the ready, too. Removal, removal. Uh, the map tokens could come in handy. So, that is our third bulwark gone, right? Yes. That's our third bulwark. I'll tell you what, man, they controlled us really well, and they are going for that full power memory deluge, uh, which was one of our main concerns there. At 30 cards remaining, go for the throat off the top. We're going to go ahead, drop them that good game instead of uh, taking too long here, and the very rare concede button appears. <laughs> we don't do it often, uh, but with the opponent not having too much on the board outside of just milling us down, I don't want to take too long and we definitely want to showcase as much of the deck as possible and guys i'm not even mad with how the deck performed there at all like that i think we we showcased it really nicely overall we didn't get some of our key big boss monsters on the board but we had a really great chance there i think um if they didn't have the double no more lies if we actually got those three one drops back and gave haste to one of our um defenders i, I don't know man it just kind of felt Felt like there was a chance. Okay, there's the Pride of Hall Clade. That's good. Definitely going to try to play it this time. Should get pretty cheap, honestly. Yeah, we keep this. Great. Great hand, dude. We'll start with the... Yep, Dark Slick Shores. Totally fine. And then Scrap Gorger comes down next turn. Rakdos. Could be Grixis, too. We're seeing a, a little bit more Grixis recently. 
So, back out, pack cow. Could be pretty good next turn, but also, like, negotiator onto scrap gorger could be cool, too. The big thing is, like, we have to remember, it, like, if we're saving negotiator for the pride, we also have to have enough mana to have this lose defender as well. So they do opt for their go for the throw on the scrap gorger. I think that's a good target for them for sure. Um, I'll tell you what, if it's spot removal again, this hand gets much, much worse really fast. <laughs> um, especially if we see more mana next turn too. I mean, realistically, no way around it. We don't want to keep go for the throat open. We want to try to do our things, right? So, luckily, it passed right back. Dinosaur, okay. Alpaca, are you alive for the turn, buddy? Are you here? Are you around? Another big booty creature off the top could be huge for us, too. Because we might be able to get a Pride of Hall Clade low enough to just uh, spam everything on the board. All right, walking bulwark. Okay, that brings the pride down to four mana. See what happens here, because they do have four open, and it with dinosaur on the cavern, it's most likely for a tali. So it's most likely a uh, Rakdos mid range or control. So if we play a three mana pride. We can't give it haste with the Bulwark, unfortunately. But, I mean, it's still pretty cool to play this turn. If we play Negotiator, buff the Pack Owl, we have a one-mana Pride. Hopefully, we don't run into a board wipe then. It's pretty good. I'm going to go Negotiator on the Pack Owl and attempt the swing. Either way, we uh, we have the Artifact entered for the, the Ak Owl Pack Owl with our bulwark here. Okay, and before they take away our Akal Pakal, we get Pride of Hall Clade down for one mana. <laughs> That's sick, dude. Nah, it's too bad we couldn't give it haste with that bulwark. Yeah, it's too bad we don't have enough mana. Or like a little bit of extra setup if like we could have kept the Scrap Gorger, for example. That could have been wild stuff. And with our 6-6, six, six, pack owl, pack owl. See what happens. We don't have double blue to activate um, Pride's ability, by the way. So that could be an issue. Big score, find some spot removal, they say. They do not find it. Uh, there's double blue. Perfect. Uh, put a card into your hand. The other will go into your grave. We put the Soaring City. I wanted to read that because sometimes I misclick. Like, sometimes it's like... Put a card into your grave. The other will go into your hand. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> come on. Come on. Survive. Come on. They do have seven mana, by the way, guys. So Atali could come down easily. And then they could just, like, rip fire off the top with Atali. We do have go for the throat for the Atali when it comes time. But if they hit too many big things, like, it could be over real fast. Yeah, Negotiator. Oh, they must have more removal then. I, I'm shocked by the Negotiator ping over the Bulwark. Right? This is minus three, minus... Yeah, that's minus three, minus three. Am I missing something there? Why not hit the Bulwark? There's, there's got to be a reason. They, they want us to spend mana, maybe? Um... Because, well, maybe they didn't know we didn't have double blue, but we had it in hand anyways, so I don't know. That's uh, interesting. Okay. So I think it would be better. Right. To actually activate the pride's ability over the bulwark. Is that true? No, it's not. It's not true, actually. I'll keep the soaring city in hand. My apologies, opponent. I'm thinking. And there's like a thousand things that those four cards could be. Right. So I'm going to keep Soaring City as utility for now and activate Bulwark's ability on itself and then on the Pride. Hmm. 
instead of playing Soaring City, activating the Pride's ability, and that's four mana for the ability. We don't have one open for the one. It does feel like spot removal then for the Pride. Trumpeting Connoisseur on the stack. We'll go ahead. <gasps> Activate only as a sorcery. <laughs> oh, no, guys. Oh, no. Well, this is awkward. I'll swing for two and cry myself to sleep because of my order of things. <laughs> oh, no, guys. Okay. Soaring City as utility is open as well as our go for the throw. And I don't want to use the Soaring City because that's the double blue we need. So we really, really desperately needed to target Pride of Hallclade first. Careful with the Bulwark, man. Activate only as a sorcery. That is super awkward. Virtue comes down. Oh. With one mana remaining, I think we just won. We just won. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what that one mana could be, but... Oh, oh, oh. It's not going to be... Never mind. Never mind. But we are going to draw... A ridiculous amount here i'm sitting here thinking like oh yeah dude this is gonna be a 15 15 no that's the bulwark's ability apparently i've never played magic before but woo woohoo <laughs> that's a lot of cards in hand where where do i begin uh let's get a scrap gorger down and not worry about the um any anything else here get the scrap gorger down and we have to keep seven the rest will be discarded um, so I want to keep the second pride. I want to keep the bulwark. Uh, you, I want to keep, I want to keep utility land, at least one, just in case we have to play one. Streetwise negotiator for that effect as well. A second Akal Pakal, the go for the throat as well. Well, maybe we don't need the second Akal, Akal Pakal. Wow. This is really hard for me to say today. Um, maybe like a, just another bedrock tortoise would be fine. Right? Submit seven. Hopefully that's okay. Nice, clean restock of the hand. Bulwark's essential to make sure we can give haste to uh, whatever, because they end up going for removal for the turn, right? Also, whatever we end up discarding, they could take back with the virtue too. So lots of stuff to think about here, guys, because now they have their own pride to go ahead and block with. Yeah, losing that Bulwark's brutal, brutal stuff. I guess technically we could blame me, uh, but maybe if I would have activated the Bulwark on the Pride, we technically still don't know what's in the opponent's hand. So maybe they would have chosen different removal, and maybe this whole time they've just been saving um, like a go for the throw as an emergency, right? I go big score. They're going to have... They discard a mountain, but they didn't... They, in fact, did not have different removal. That activates twice because of the Chandra, so they'll have four open. One blocker. How do we want to do this, man? Is it just going to be Tortoise full swing? We Tortoise full swing into four mana. With, uh, with Go for the Throat taking out the Pride. I think we could get there. They'd have to have two pieces of spot removal, right? Terrace under. Wow, we have to hit the virtue, right? Like we shouldn't risk anything. Eh, we could we could potentially risk some stuff here, actually. With Lance, so we go tortoise first, have two open. Gotta be spot removal for the opponent, right? Yeah, my super janky bulwark play might actually be the end of us, unfortunately. So I, I hope that play doesn't take us out, but hexproof. It lands. They didn't use any removal, guys. They didn't use any removal. Um. So at that point, we can give... We might as well just give haste to the tortoise then. Oh, no, 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 no. It doesn't have defender. Be careful. Red cat, you've played magic before. Understand what's going on here. <laughs> we'll just go ahead and try to take out the uh, ride with our go for the throat then. We still have one mana open, uh, which uh, we do have two mana open, actually, but we just... The bright doesn't have... <laughs> I really wanted to swig with that pride, man. Hey, good game, opponent. 
It didn't end up mattering, but I really wanted to swing with that 1515 pride. So what we could have done, few things, right? Hold up, hold up, hold up, bro. That was a mess. And I, I just, I just like, <laughs> I just spilt milk all over this game. Okay. So if I wanted to, for, like, first of all, really good game opponent. I wanted to swing with the pride. So instead of going go for the throw, we could have played Bulwark and activated the uh, thing on the pride to get rid of the defender. So there's like a lot of little nuances in this build where like a lot of our cards have defender and a lot of our cards don't. And so like there's a lot of awkward uh, situations where it's like, for example, you want to do something fancy with negotiator because you don't have a tortoise on the board or something. And then you activate that on something with defender and you're like, well, oops, <laughs> because you got to be able to actually get rid of that defender properly with like the bulwark and everything. So there's like, there's like five corners to this deck, if that makes sense, right? Like there's just, there's actually just a lot going on. I really wish I would have practiced with it, but luckily we got that victory. Luckily we had exactly nine going through because that could have been really bad. But so if we activated Bulwark, at, like, man, I really wanted to swing with that 1515. Like you guys could probably hear it in my voice, the disappointment. <laughs> um, anyways, if I swung with that, we wouldn't have used the go for the throw on their pride, right? So they would have blocked it, but like, I really, really wanted to swing with it. Okay. Keepable hand, dude. Great curve. Really great curve. Um, oh. Mm, tap land for days, though. It's still worth the, uh, still worth getting the one mana card down, especially if we see... Well, if we go Negotiator, we're probably just gonna put the backup counter onto itself, so curving out here isn't proper. Or, it isn't necessary. Yeah. I also don't have a blue source for the Akal Pakal. Hmm. Well, there we go. So Scrap Gorger. Scrap Gorger isn't bad, but then it's not an untapped land, so it helps us mana fix, though. Celestis comes down. Okay, Scrap Gorger number two isn't terrible, as we know that there's likely more spot removal incoming from the opponent. With Rafine's Tower, spot removal in Celestis, this is likely Esper Control, right? Oh. Esper Planeswalkers. Old Retstein. Okay. If we go Negotiator, swing at Soren, they block Protect the Soren. That's still pretty good for us, though, isn't it? We're not curving out properly, but, like, at least we're getting stuff off the board. We could go second scrap gorger negotiator onto itself just to establish more but then a board wipe is likely right we go old rutstein and this is uh this is kind of what i mean huh there's a there's actually a lot packed into the build i think we need to pressure the soren and hopefully that's okay do not tap that. Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. Um, so, <laughs> so they block. They protect the Soren at, at any cost, I would assume. Unless they have a second Soren in hand, then maybe they would value the lifelink creature more, but yeah. Um, so we're getting the Pride of Hall Clade a little cheaper. So, like I said, it's not a great curve for the turn, but pressuring the Soren seems essential. We go plus on Soren probably means like a board wipe then. Oh! And fall off the top. So luckily we didn't have more valuable creatures on the board. However, without a blue source and missing the mana, maybe we see treasure with old Rutstein. Hit the blocker with the incubator now too. This could be really bad. And I kind of like snap kept this uh, first hand thinking that it was actually pretty good. But without the blue source... Without Akal Pakal coming down to restock our hand, I think we're in trouble, dude. Because we could run into board wipe after board wipe as they continue to establish their um, planeswalkers. So they want to get a chump blocker here for sure. Because they don't want us to do the same thing that we did the previous turn with our negotiator. They still have two open as well. 
for the incubator power up. Bulwark isn't bad. That's not bad at all. Treasure would have been a little bit better with old Rotstein buddy. Maybe it's going to be armored scrap gorger for the turn. If we put too much onto the board, then we just know that the board wipes come in. Uh, Negotiator, Pressure, Soren, Chump. Chump is all too easy when the plus one on Elspeth replenishes it. So setting up for more could be good. No pressure for the turn is pretty rough though, huh? Okay. Set up for the turn, get pride down to um, one. <laughs> It's actually really easy to get this cheap, huh? Um, no great blocks, because they, they power up. I'm just going to keep it back, just in case, too. Because you never know if it's going to be like an Elspeth Smite block with the soldier, then we lose the old Rutstein, and then they just replenish soldier immediately. Yeah, Elspeth Smite is definitely a card we would see in this style of deck, so... Get that 1-1. One, one. Luckily, that means no board wipe for the turn since they're generating their creatures first. Wedding announcement, that's gonna be a lot to deal with, man. So let's, let's chump blockers for days. How do we wanna do this? Without any blue sources to use the Pride of Hallclade's ability too, this could be really tricky. Oh, Bedrock Tortoise would have been so good, dude. Oh no. <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll give haste to the pride with the bulwark since that survived somehow. I, I mean, everything survived. Um, then we can go ahead and do negotiator on the pride too. The, like the chump blocks break my heart. It's too bad we can't uh, give it trample somehow. Okay, well, I mean, we'll play this. We'll see if it, it might get like immediately removed as well. And we might have one mana available for... The blood token too so maybe we could do that first potentially no probably not go ahead and give that haste it's going to be a 15 15 swinging in they easily chump it but at least i'll get at least my dream will come true to swing with a 15 15 pride that was only one mana Let's do it. All right. <laughs> but we'll swing to face. Uh, maybe. Opponent. Opponent. You don't need the spot removal, opponent. Look the other way. Just let me swing. Please. Please. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um. So we'll swing to face. No worries. Yay. We got the swing. That's all I needed. We can retire happy now. <laughs> okay so easy chump so that's something to consider in the um in the final thoughts right so if i drop the curtains do they i mean we're like in a lot of trouble anyways if they have the board wipe it is what it is huh like playing around a board wipe at this point is just like like either way we're in trouble we might as well get it all onto the board Especially when we don't have a blue source for the Akal Pakal just yet, too. And if they would wipe the board, we'd lose the Scrap Gorger. So definitely no blue source then. Revelry. Maybe we're going wide enough here to do something with this Bulwark, right? We go onto the Pride again. Swing for 15-15. We go onto Curtains. Have that lose Defender. We see blue source off the top. We could activate Pride's ability, but that still needs to get the damage through to restock our hand. Yeah, there's a there's like there's a lot of little things in this build, huh? <laughs> this is quite the puzzle, man. So concealing curtains wouldn't be a bad flip. As then we don't have to worry about the defender on that, and the menace is pretty decent too, but then... <gasps> I can't believe they were generating all those tokens just to put more counters onto the incubator. Well, how many extra tokens did they generate there? <laughs> 
brutal stuff opponent. All right, let's go ahead and activate this blood token. See if we can see a blue source. Be old Ratstein, buddy. I do believe this is the opponent's. We're 35 minutes in. We're going to go one more draw unless the opponent takes a while here. We have a blocker against their 15-15. Doesn't even... Are they going to power it up? Start swinging? Maybe not. Especially if they don't power it up here, we'll give it to them on the draw. They still have two. Power up full swing. Ah, there we go. There we go. We might not have to concede then. Um, I will I will take the 15 gladly. And see what's on top, because that's important. <gasps> Blue source. Hi. Alright, let's see what's in the opponent's hand. Blue source is a little late. I don't think it mattered, guys, honestly. And maybe I could have uh, played it out a little bit better too. Wow, they had temporary lockdown as well. <laughs> okay. Since the wedding announcement flipped too, like their uh, double blocks got much, much better. Go ahead, let the opponent swing in. So something tells me that the opponent doesn't get to attack in for the final swing very often. I don't know, just a uh, good game opponent. <laughs> Alright, we only got three games in. 36 minutes. Let's go one more. I think we showcased the deck well enough. The complexities are uh, astounding, guys. Like, honestly, um, maybe it's just me right now struggling playing Magic the Gathering, but <laughs> but I, I'd rather blame the deck, you know what I mean? Okay, but, but no, honestly, yeah, there's a lot going on here. Um, and it, it, it has to be like the multiple themes packed in, right? Like we have all the big butts, all the big booties, but then also we have like a small defender theme packed in as well. And then just all that mixed with like a little bit of an artifact theme too. So <laughs> like there's a lot to keep track of, I guess. Okay. So we actually have all three mana colors in hand. We actually have bedrock tortoise. Let's see if that does a thing here too. In the victory, like, we saw how that Hexproof can be just absolutely amazing. So we will opt for a turn one and then get our tap lands down. Unless we want to keep go for the throw open and play Soaring City. Which is possible. Especially if it's going to be like Azorus. Ooh. Azorus Tempo, potentially. Okay, there we go. There's a green source. The negotiator onto itself. I mean, at least we're curving out a little bit. Um. Yeah, that's not that's not terrible, especially since we don't know what we're up against yet. With the spirited companion, there's been a there's been a deck that I've been uh, sitting on, and maybe the opponent is running a very similar build. It could be detective enchantments. It is, in fact, not a detective enchantments. Actually, no, it's still... Okay, it could be a Zorus ETB, right? Oh, this is this is fun. Okay, Spell Pierce, that could come in handy. Activate Concealing Curtains isn't terrible. Not a lot of great trades for the opponent. We could just go... Um, go, go for the throat and keep the Spell Pierce open for the turn, too. I'm kind of curious, though. I want to see what's in the opponent's hand. We're going to go for that. Hopefully, I don't regret that and say, like, well, that would have been a perfect target for Spell Pierce. Oh, Thalia in the build. Something tells me Spell Pierce isn't going to have a lot of targets. <laughs> okay, and then the um, Purity Overseer as well. So they, they are rocking an ETB build. I think the best bet here would be to hit the Thalia. I don't know, though. That's tough. I think I think the, the main point here is Thalia is going to benefit them much more than it benefits us, but we also just have a whole bunch of creatures packed in too. Uh, like, go for the throat hits the Purity Overseer quite effectively, but they're still going to have a 3-3 three, three left over from that too. That wasn't a terrible trade for us either since this had flying. One for two and... All right, Purity Overseer. So they get that 3-3. Three, three. We have a good double block here, but we have go for the throat. Um, Tortoise is so good, actually. And they still they still could double block. That would be a really good trade for us, actually. 
only land in the opponent's hand except for this one card. But like a swing, see if they double block, then go for the throw as a surprise. I'm pretty sure they take the three here. Or we could get it to a 4-4, four, four, but I, I think we do this and then go for the throw. Okay, so they take the three. So I'd love to set up that tortoise, but I'm, I'm actually just not going to. We're going to get concealing curtains down. We could peer into their hand. But I think I'm actually just going to have go for the throat and spell pierce open. Like for their turn, and hopefully I don't regret them untapping their land, right? Because like, for example, if they power up restless anchorage, that would be a much better target for go for the throat. Go clue for a draw. The opponent's deck looks fun. Like this this is a like Azorus ETBs versus big booties. Pretty fun. Okay, with three open. So we'll go ahead, we'll block here and see what happens. And then we'll go for the throat the purity overseer, I suppose. Just to take one less damage, and it's still a really good target. Probably. Depends how many artifacts they or how many ETB effects they end up having. We might be able to stop an ETB effect with the Spell Pierce 2 here, since we have a blue source open. Nice. Good hit. Only taking two. Really good. All right. Bulwark. <laughs> That's actually not bad, because we'd still be able to uh, keep Spell Pierce open then, but I think, I think it's Tortoise and then keep the uh, Curtains a defender for now. It's like establishing the tortoise seems better. Nah, never mind. This is actually pretty good, man. Keeping the spell pierce open could be a saving grace. Like, you never know. Here we go you. On to you. Uh, we could swing for 10 for the turn, too. Like, we could play Soaring City as a land and then uh, boost the uh, bulwark. I think, I think I like saving the spell pierce, though. Right, like spot removal. No, no spot removal. Keeping Soaring City as utility is probably better than playing it as a land anyways, too. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. This is going to be an interesting one, though. I, I think getting rid of some of their, like, main ETB effects, too. Like, another Guardian would have been great for them. Oh, Thalia comes down. Making the spell pierce cost two, so like we knew Thalia was in the build, so playing that other Soaring City. Luckily, they didn't have anything else there. So a lot of great blockers. We could power up the curtains now. Pakal, Pakal isn't bad. Remember, these two have Defender, and Tortoise doesn't make them lose Defender. So like that's one of those little, one of those little nuanced things that I, that I mean here, when there's just a lot to think about because of all the different themes. Okay, so we start with Soaring City to make sure we have two open for the Spell Pierce when we power up the Revealing Eye. Uh, just in case they wanted to use Spot Removal first. It's just land. The opponent's flooding. Oh no, opponent. Well, at that point, at that point, we just, we, we, <laughs> no, I'll keep Spell Pierce open, I guess. <laughs> I was going to say, at that point, we get greedy with the full swing, but the 3-3 three, three blocks the blue arc really well, and you never know if we see something that we really want to give haste off the top, too. This would have been the perfect game for the, uh, the pride to come down, right? Since we were actually able to keep our creatures around. So double block for the first eye, probably like, ooh, if... Thalia, okay, we should hit Thalia then, probably, instead of the 3-3. Three, three. Like, don't worry too much about the 3-3, three, three, right? I think I'd be more concerned. Yeah, that's totally fine. We take you out. I guess that would be the order of concern as well. Make sure the Anchorage dies. I mean, we, we are losing two key pieces here. They had pretty good blocks overall. So maybe, like, maybe this board would be less threatening 
No, yeah, I think Thalia was still the target, but the 3 3 is still pretty good for them. Regardless of the flood, this is anyone's game. Like, honestly, dude. Okay, Pacal comes down. Now we take the turn for setup. I'm so worried that as soon as I tap out, we're going to miss the opportunity for that spell pierce to do the thing, but the opponent has so much mana anyways. Yeah, we're not drawing off the pack out. Now we just set up with some menacing creatures and, like, wait for the tortoise drop, right? Yeah, dude, anyone's game. And I think a big problem right now with this build in particular is actually just, like, not being able to trample on through. We really have to consider something that gives trample. Even so, if you're doing that, now you're just adding, like, a whole other theme. <gasps> Bro? We're in danger? Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, guys, as soon as I tapped out. <laughs> Bro, oh my goodness, the punish is unreal. That has to be like the greatest possible target. <laughs> Dude, you gotta laugh sometimes, huh? Kayla's reconstruction, they spent all their mana. Maybe they were just like holding on to that. <laughs> Dude, that's one for the ages, huh? Missing that spell pierce on such a powerful effect. Oh, man. So I think this is heavily leaning towards the opponent now. But we do have some extra removal packed in for the bodyguards potentially and stuff too. Uh, but no, I, I, I think they're going to pull this back in no time. Plug some extra counters on some flyers. Power up Restless at this point. Now's the time to swing in and start like pressuring. Just make sure you don't swing with the bodyguards. And like, yeah, just in the air for a few turns in a row here. Uh, should be enough. So Guardian. I wasn't expecting such a huge thing to come out of a Thalia build, man. Thalia is an interesting addition with uh, the Kayla's Reconstruction, but I suppose that's one of the reasons why they have so much mana packed in, too. Really neat deck opponent. A swing in the air for seven and pressure lethal next turn. I don't know what we could see off the top, but we didn't see our board wipe this game yet right so maybe like because that would take care of the bodyguards it doesn't hit the guardian or the restless anchorage or the uh three three either all right my turn what we see off the top here it's gonna be land womp womp well we'll go ahead we'll definitely let the opponent swing on in huh we'll go for our swing too for fun this Kayla's Reconstruction was so wild, man. This poor spell pierce. Another just proof of concept of just me not playing counter spells well enough, huh? It, it, <laughs> it always comes down to that. Like, often when I play counter spells, too, I'm, it, like, they just, they kind of just sit in my hand exactly like they're doing. Would have been such a good target. <laughs> oh, no. They are, they don't know what's in hand, so they're going for the blocks, man. All right, so we'll do that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, like they, realistically, I agree that the opponent, like they didn't want to just chump there. They didn't know if we had like surprise, trample, last seven damage, right? <laughs> Good game opponent. And they still don't know it's in hand, so they're still gonna uh, play it out cautiously. They had another Guardian in hand, too. It's just a really neat little ETB deck, huh? Oh, 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 okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, good game opponent. So 25% win rate. Honestly, I'm pretty happy that we got that victory, guys. And overall, the deck, like, <laughs> the game is like, are you sure you're having fun? And then, like, at the next game, are you positive, bro? Like, <laughs> The game asked, I feel like it asked me three times in those four games, but I'm probably wrong there, right? I think it at least asked me twice today so far. 
All right, guys, big butts. Look at this deck list, huh? This was hard for me for some reason. Maybe, maybe I need to. Uh, maybe I need to sit back. Maybe I need to take a cat nap and then come back to some magic for the day, right? But no, it was tough. This was really tough. This was harder than like a control build for me to run for some reason. I, I really was. Um, the the gears were working hard. There was smoke coming out of my ears. So few things, right? Old Rutstein. I love the extra value that this provides just all the time. And then also just like a 1-4 isn't terrible. Unfortunately, like the removal is just like everywhere all the time. So when you do get a 3-drop onto the board, luckily this has that ETB too though. I think more so, I, I was trying to think of a reason to justify the, the old Rutstein. But like, for example, Akal Pakal has that potential to go ahead and restock your hand. But since the uh, artifact theme in here is so light, it actually didn't have a lot of chances to restock our hand, right? Um, outside of that, just like the five toughness should be worthwhile overall, but sometimes it just didn't feel worthwhile. And then the splash of blue, here's the problem, right? You're like, well, what the heck are we splashing blue for? Unfortunately, the bottom ability on the Pride of Hall Clade is what we're splashing blue for. And so if we have to get double blue on the board at some point for that ability, then we might as well play some other uh, powerful blue cards, right? So, speaking of powerful blue cards, man, this spell pierce, bro, I'm going to be thinking about that forever. Like, that's the... <laughs> that was that was the peak right there. Just the uh, missing that counter spell on that Kayla's... Um... <laughs> Dude, wait, hold on. We got to look at that card real quick. <clears throat> oh. Not Kayla's command. Kayla's reconstruction. Axon, triple white, sorcery. They tapped out for this man. Now, uh, like, look, if we kept open that one blue for the turn, maybe they wouldn't have played it. That's very possible. Like, we don't always know what the opponent's going to do. We don't, obviously, we don't know what's in their hand all the time either. It's really hard to say. Like, they could have said, like, oh, well, that island, I'm not going to run this down into a counter spell. Or they potentially would have played around like a make disappear style, which is exactly what spell pierce is. It's pay two. So at the very least, it would have been less destructive, but they ended up tapping out for this. What was it? X is four. So they look at the top seven cards and they put X artifacts and or creature cards with mana value three or less from among them onto the battlefield and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. In the deck with Thalia and everything, I would be surprised if this was like more than a one of, but maybe a two of, maybe, because there's so many great ETB effects in that deck to actually hit. Such a, like, that was so cool, man. Really, really neat deck. Uh, really innovative deck from the opponent there in the last game. Awesome stuff. Okay, so what else do we want to talk about here, guys? The uh, removal felt fine we could always go up more removal right like that's one of the things too <laughs> like maybe instead of the spell pierce and keeping it open some turns and then uh closing it off on that last turn there maybe that's just like not for me ever maybe i should just go up another terrace under because like there were plenty of temporary lockdowns that we were running into today as well terrace under has a so many great artifacts and enchantments to hit we're seeing a lot more celestis finally right like celestis was slept on or, or it felt slept on like it felt like it was played at when it first came out and then for a while there it just like got got buried and it just like didn't re-emerge until what feels like relatively recently a lot of people playing celestis i feel like it popped up or popping up more first in like the rakdos mid-range Plus, this is really good, dude. It does a lot all the time and eventually helps you filter out and gain life and just everything. And the ramp on it is just so good. The mana fixing. I'll tell you what, you're not mad to drop a Terra Sunder on a Celestis. And since we're seeing a lot more of it, yeah. And since we're seeing a lot more temporary lockdown, we're seeing war leaders call a lot too. I, I think I want to drop the Spell Pierce for the Terra Sunder. But at the same time, there is a really good reason that I had Spell Pierce in here. It was to hit the turn five Sunfalls that I'm seeing a lot of. And guess what? We did see a lot of Sunfall today too. So, uh, but only a one of, like, do we want two of them? I don't want two of them. I know that much. <laughs> um, The extra abilities with Tortoise and Lumberknot. Lumberknot didn't get to hit the board today, but it's just like in here as a fifth Tortoise essentially, right? Even though Tortoise is much better. 
uh, pride. We got this down to one mana easy peasy in here. The Malicious Eclipse was only a one of two specifically for like the Boros decks and the other decks that it would work well with is like when you're playing against soldiers or mono red or anything like that. I still like the one of here as well. The problem with all these one of utility spells is are you going to see them when you actually need to see them? And so when you're looking at the list, you got to kind of look at your own meta and what you're seeing and what you're playing against and say, well, I need more Malicious Eclipse because I'm only seeing Boros. And so at that point, you could drop that Spell Pierce for the Malicious Eclipse. And always keep an eye on the mana base too as the splash in the mana base. Um, That one game where we didn't really see the blue mana was a little scary, but don't forget we do have some mana fixing here with the Scrap Gorger too, so... Lots to consider here. Restless Cottage is definitely the choice Restless Land. I don't even think we need to consider the other Restless Lands because the more tap lands you go to, the uh, the slower the curve is actually going to work. Uh, and the curve is actually pretty healthy, I would say. Uh, fitting for big butts, right? <laughs> no, I think this is a, I think it's a pretty healthy curve because remember this one, the 6 plus. So the, the curve gets filled out a little bit better with the pride of Hall Clade uh, getting cheaper as the game goes on too, so. All right, guys. Hopefully, like, overall, I went over the deck well enough. Hopefully, you guys still enjoyed the games regardless of how I played the games. Oh, my goodness, dude. This is also one that I kind of want to go back and just kind of see, like, oh, well, Red Cat, maybe you're a little bit too hard on yourself there because, like, they still had, like, three cards in hand that you didn't know about or... You know, stuff like that too. Like a lot of little learning experiences that I feel like I could learn from uh, from playing this deck. Yeah, good stuff, man. Really fun uh, suggestion. Thank you again for the suggestion. If you guys made it this far into the video for real, y'all are champions. We're almost an hour in. Oh my goodness. Make sure you check out that description where we got that Discord link as well as that Patreon link if you're interested in supporting the channel that way. Okay, guys. Hey, I will see you in the next video.